Among the greatest compliments that can be offered about a racehorse is to be considered a universal yardstick for excellence. For leading Sydney trainer Tommy Smith, Tullock became the new benchmark for quality gallopers in the late 1950s. That accolade is probably even more noteworthy when we consider that Tullock was sidelined by illness for almost two years at the peak of his career. Tullock was probably denied some great victories, but his place among racing legends had already been based on a sparkling three-year-old season that will be hard to match in Australian racing history. A bay colt from Trelawney and paid 750 guineas, some suggested it was a mistake regarding the colt as small, weedy and hollow-backed. Fortunately, new owner Evelyn Haley shared TJ's faith in the breeding. He named the colt Tullock after the Scottish town where his mother was born. Under TJ's guidance, Tullock was a star performer as a two-year-old. But even TJ was probably stunned by Tullock's record-breaking three-year-old season. He won 14 of his 16 races that year. They included the first Derby Slam. The AJC Derby at Randwick was an indicator of the glory that lay ahead. By the time Tullock arrived at Caulfield in October, he was everyone's favourite for the Cup. What a glorious burst of speed. Tullock quickly establishes a winning margin. Tullock's time for the 12 furlong journey shatters a 22-year-old record and is the second fastest time ever in the world for the distance. The comparisons were already being made with the ultimate measure for greatness, Far Lap. The Caulfield Cup win was a world record and Tullock's earlier AJC Derby win had been two seconds faster than Far Lap's victory. The checkbooks were being opened in the United States. But the immediate interest for everyone else was the Melbourne Cup and by how much Tullock would win. That's when Evelyn Haley dropped his bombshell. Tullock's owner said two miles carrying eight stone four pounds was too far for a horse that had just turned three. He believed it would ruin Tullock. Haley stood firm despite TJ's urgings and a public outcry. Victory for Tullock in the VRC derby confirmed what race fans knew, that Tullock would have won the Melbourne Cup if allowed to run. The horse that finished second in the cup by a neck was more than eight lengths behind Tullock in the VRC derby. Being the first horse to complete the derby slam, the AJC, Queensland and VRC derbies, was further confirmation that Tullock was a rare champion. More wins followed in Sydney and Queensland, and the stakes earnings went past £66,000. Then it all came crashing down. A mysterious, life-threatening illness was to rob the champion and racing public of almost two years as Tullock battled recurring infections and weight loss. Eventually, a vet suggested the germs might be in Tullock's mouth. He tried a concoction of port wine and brandy mixed into a porridge of oats. It cured Tullock almost immediately. Tullock returned to the track in 1960 in the Queen's Plate. He quickly showed he still had the speed and winning qualities. More wins followed in the Cox Plate and the McKinnon Stakes, and soon all the talk was about the Melbourne Cup. But the great prize was to elude Tullock again. Top weight of 10 stone 1 pound and what the critics regard as a poor ride saw Tullock finish 7th, the only race he was unplaced. Tullock was to win 15 times after his return from illness. One of the most emotional was the 1961 Brisbane Cup in front of 33,000 race fans, which rounded out a phenomenal career. All up, Tullock won 36 of his 53 races, was second 12 times and third four times. He was the first horse to win 100,000 pounds, a record he held for 11 years. It's no surprise then that Tullock was an inaugural inductee into the Australian Racing Hall of Fame. From the 1930s, the phrase, the best since Farlap, was the highest honour bestowed upon a promising horse. For Tommy Smith, the new benchmark of praise became, the best since Tullock.